Hello and welcome to this, the last video in uh, module 9 uh, for these problems on statisticsworkbook.com. Uh, this one now we're going to be doing a two-tailed test on a population proportion. Uh, so again, you're going to see a lot of similarities uh, with this test compared to all of the other ones that we've done. Um, a lot of the calculations, the process is identical, the calculations are similar. Uh, so at this point, if you've done all of these exercises, you should have a pretty solid uh, understanding of how everything is done, at least working within a single population uh, as we've been doing. So <clears throat> let's just get into this exercise. Uh, so it's been argued that drunk drivers cause 50% of accidents on the nation's highways. In order to test this claim, we obtain the following information. So of the last 100 accidents in your state, you find 45 of them were caused by drunk drivers. So part A, formulate the null and alternative. So the null and alternative shows that we're testing a proportion a lot of students, most of the tests that you do are often a test on a mean, so students get into the habit of just always writing mu. But if it's a test on proportions, it better be uh, shown in your test. This is a test on proportions. Uh, and we're testing to see, uh, we're testing this claim that 50% of the accidents uh, are caused by drunk drivers. So this is going to be, is it 50%? or is it not 50%? Now, you can write it either like this or like this. Either one is perfectly fine, as long as you make sure that when you're doing the calculations, uh, you input the value as 0.5 rather than 50, because of that will certainly cause you problems um, in, your, in your calculations. So here I've, justif or I've, I've formulated this in a way so that if the uh, evidence supports the null hypothesis, then that supports the claim that, that we have evidence to show that, oh yeah, 50% of the accidents uh, are caused by drunk drivers. Uh, if the evidence supports the alternative hypothesis, uh, then that means that, uh, no, I cannot support the claim. The evidence doesn't support the claim that half of those accidents are caused by drunk drivers. So when we go through and let's uh, calculate the test statistic, this is using the Z distribution, almost always, well, always for us, when we're doing these calculations, the criteria uh, that have to be met in order to do uh, use the Z distribution are relatively easy to meet with any sufficiently large sample. Um, we can use the standard normal distribution for these calculations. So we'll always use the Z. This criteria, sample size times proportion, sample size times one minus the proportion, um, have to be greater than or equal to five. So we'll always have sufficiently large samples in our work uh, that we can do that. So here's our formula, P bar minus P naught over the standard error. That standard error is P naught times one minus. Again, in this formula here, make sure that you realize, that you notice that the proportion that we're using uh, is the hypothesized value. It, there is a time and a place to use uh, this formula, P bar times one minus P bar over N. Uh, but that's only for confidence intervals on proportions. Uh, so uh, when we're doing a test, uh, don't use that P bar. We don't need it. Uh, we're using uh, the hypothesized value because we, of course, always do these tests under the assumption that the hypothesis is true unless we have evidence to show, uh, to, to show otherwise. Um, when we're doing confidence intervals, of course, there is no hypothesis, there is no test, so we are only working with sample data. Uh, okay, enough said, let's, um, let's finish this up. So here, this is going to be the square root of 0.5 times 1 minus 0.5 over our sample was 100 accidents. So this is going to be... 0.5 times uh, 1 minus 0.5 is going to be 0.5 again, divided by 100, and square root, so 0 0.05. And here, that sample proportion is 45 out of 100. 
So that's 0.45 minus our hypothesized value divided by that standard error. And this looks like it's going to be just equal to negative 1. 0.45 minus 0.5 divided by 0.05. And there we have negative 1. So there we have our test statistic. Uh, now let's get our p-value. Uh, before we do, I just noticed that I haven't specified a level of significance yet, and there isn't one stated in the in the case. So let's let's do this one at the alpha O3 level of significance. Uh, oops, 0.3, alpha 0, 0.3. See if that changes anything uh, in in this test. At the moment, I don't think it will, but we've always been using 0.05, so I might as well mix it up. Hey, eh? last video of this of the module. Let's <laughs> let's get crazy. So, test statistic of negative 1, let's go to our z-tables, and here's negative 1 right here, and it's exactly negative 1, so that gives us a value of 0 0.1587 in this lower tail. Now, is that our p-value? No, that's not our p-value. This is a two-tailed test, remember. Two-tailed test, multiply that probability by 2. So I pull up my calculator, 0.1587 times 2. My p-value is 3174. p-value is 0.3174. So coming back to our problem with a p-value of 0.3174, are we going to reject or not? Absolutely not. That is so much greater than alpha. Uh, 0 0.03, 0 0.05, 0 0.1. Alpha could have been really any reasonable number. Uh, and we would still fail to reject. So here, this is a do not reject that null hypothesis. I have insufficient evidence to show that it is different from 50%. Uh, so uh, our evidence does uh, support the claim uh, that's been made here. So that's it. We've got our conclusion, and we've interpreted that. The evidence uh, is very weak for the alternative. It supports the null. It supports the claim that 50% of accidents are being caused by drunk drivers. Good. Okay, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and all of the videos for Module 9. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, let's get started on Module 10. Bye-bye.